watch. It's just going to be live. See? Receiving your content, your audience will be. I guarantee this works. Stream health good. I guarantee this works. Yep. Told you. Works. Yeah, but let's see if the stream health like changes. No, it'll be good. That's so stupid then. Yeah, so you're what, te- you're telling me. The events you use yep. like different encoders. Okay. All right, I'm going to I'm just going to go, uh, go rant while yeah. people funnel in here. I'm you, heading start YouTube, recording. YouTube really needs to fix its live streaming platform because it is a hot pile of garbage. It is flaming garbage in 90 degree heat that is impossible to put out even with 5000 fire trucks. Like there's, there's, when you go live on YouTube, there's a way to go live with your webcam. Then there's a way to schedule an event that builds your URL and does all that stuff. Then there's just a way to like, just go live with a custom, like you have your stream key and whatever. And for whatever reason, we created an event and I, I don't even feel like, I don't even feel like articulating myself anymore. Honestly, it's just so stupid. Like live streaming stream now events or camera, like just get rid of the events thing or just call it like live stream. And it's like, do you want to stream right now? Or do you want to schedule an event? Oh God, it's so broken. It's so broken. We, we were just, so like in, again, in the YouTube backend, you can go click something called, oh God, it's so broken. And now like the URL, did it even create a proper URL? I don't know. They're having technical issues. We're live some stream health is so good. else. Okay. Here live events, live podcast, live now, 88 watching now. Yeah. Like what is this URL? Okay. It's, it's so complicated. Like YouTube's backend is so complicated for absolutely no reason. I'm going to de- um, delete this event from the back end. Okay. So like when you click go live on YouTube creator studio, for whatever reason, there's a, there's a thing that says like stream now or create an event. And then we were using the create event thing. And then the stream keys were all different. And for whatever reason it was saying bad health, bad health, bad health, but we're live, which is good. Um, I need to talk to someone at YouTube because it's such an easy fix. It's just so garbage. All right. I feel like creators is the honest with so far. I'm trying to go on Apple shop, buy an iPhone 10 S, but I'm seeing a lot of hype around 10 R it's cheaper. Lambda Ola before maybe 10 R is better. Okay. I will just blanket answer every single question. Should I get this? Should I get that? Should I get this? Should I get that? Should I get that? Should I get this? Should I get this? Should I get that? Go to the store and look at it in person. Like, don't let me make the decisions for you. I can wax poetic about these devices for hours on end, but Ultimately, it comes down to your preference. Do you like the way it feels in your hand? Do you care to have a gigantic phone? Do you care what the back of your phone looks like? Do you care to have one camera? Do you care to have a telephoto camera? I can't answer those questions for you. <laughs> Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Welcome to the Sam Ragecast. I'm gonna Shut up. A tweet, <laughs> Here, let me just ban this person really quickly. Goodbye. Oh, my goodness. All right. Here, I just sent you a tweet. I'm just, I'm just frustrated because, like... YouTube is so good, but it's also so bad and so unnecessarily complex. Like, does anyone at YouTube try and go live or they just build these things and just say, oh, just, oh, it'll work. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> You'd hope not. Advice is great too. Yes, that's, that's my advice is go to the store and see it in person. Like, is the 10R better than the 10S? Do you want an OLED display? Are you able to distinctly tell the difference between OLED and LCD? Do you want a 6.1 inch phone or do you want a 5.8 inch phone? Do you want a colored iPhone? Do you need a telephoto lens? Like for me, I want a phone that's 4.3 inches. Apple will never make a 4.3 inch phone again. So I'm stuck with an iPhone 10S, 5.8 inches. I hate it. I hate having such a big screen phone. My pinky is works so hard every day. When you hold your phone, yeah. the pinky is the shelf. Mashable had an article. Every single person that has a large screen phone, you have to hold the phone with your pinky. Back in the day, you can hold your phone like this and you don't need your pinky anymore. I really miss the days of small screen smartphones. But for you, if you're watching this, you love to consume media on your phone, go with the 10s max, get a 5.8 inch display. But again, it's ultimately up to you. I can give you as much advice as you want, but again, like I don't want to, I don't want to make the purchase decision for you because I'm not you. I can inform you. And that's what I'm like, go to the store and see it for yourself. Like the iPhones look so sick in person. We need Sam to chill. Gerard Walsh. I see every single comment. They're directly uploaded into my brain. I have an alpha version of Neuralink directly from Elon himself. 
Sam, do you need a nap? No, I don't. You're on one right I kind of love Sam raging. It's rare. It's rare that I rage. All right, we got 200 people in here. Um, are you recording on OBS, Colin? Yeah, we're recording on OBS. All right. Everything's good. So Colin's here. And we are getting bad video settings on stream are we? again. I don't know what this is. God damn Something it. the keyframe frequency. Okay, stream, how does it look? That's the real question. How does it, does it look this. okay? Keyframe interval. Let's just go with four. Uh, this is out of focus. My camera's out of focus. I am not. The, the wall is in focus. Can I get a saw, dude? Sam is on Adderall. I'm definitely not on Adderall. I, I, I ate breakfast. I, I'm, I haven't even drank the Red Bull yet. I don't think so. Looks fine. Can you recommend a movie? Co watch the original Matrix. Looks pro. <laughs> what a random a suggestion. Rage Sam is pretty tame. I like it. <laughs> I am high on life. You're damn right. Oh, man. We got an egg. Egg alert. No, it's still... Oh, God. It's so zoomed in now. Oh, God. Colin. Yeah, I know. Colin. Because I clicked the autofocus thing. I don't know how to get out of it now. Oh, God. Oh, now it's good. Now it's good. Now it's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got it. No, but the it's still zoomed in. Oh, my God. I look, I, I look like an egghead. Why do I? Why is my head shaped like an egg? It looks fine. On my I head. wonder We're why. Good. We're good. <laughs> because that there might good. be a yolk floating up in that. There, there is years. definitely a yolk. I don't even have a brain. It's just yolk in my head. Did I go to the event? No, I did not. I did not go to the event. I love, I love listening to Sam talking about boosted. boosted. Where is the mini X review though? I have. I just don't have enough time, honestly. Like, if I want to go to TwitchCon, how am I supposed to film a boosted mini X review? We should have done it at TwitchCon. I, we should have done, 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 done it at TwitchCon. Uh, Try Bang what? Energy if you like sugar-free Red Bulls. This is sugar-free Red Bull. Why is the 10R camera better than the 10S? That's my biggest worry about buying one or the other. Why, who said it? Who? Why, why is it better? It's just a different camera. No, why? it's not better. It's the same exact oh, I thought, camera. Oh, I thought, oh my no, 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 no. He said, oh, I thought he said 10R better. He says, better. why is no, no, the 10R no, no, camera though. better than the 10S? The 10R camera is the exact same sensor and six-element lens the 10R has the same camera as the 10S. But only it only has one lens, though. It doesn't have two uh -huh. lenses. Correct. Everybody, everybody chill. Let's start the podcast. Let's God do the intro. God damn let's it. Let's do the intro. God let's do the damn. intro. All right. And let's start recording this thing. Only to be used as a throwback taco night at Cooper's, says Justin. Throwback. nine ninety nine. Win. Let's put right. some dollar, dollar tacos. How I had some dollar tacos this? this week, actually. They're really, really good. We have Colin on the mic today, so if you if you hear whispers, if you're of, God uh, talking to, just know it's him. Um, yeah, Colin's in here. Colin's in here. Okay, wow, ten bucks from Justin. Only used to be a th for a throwback taco night at Cooper's. Wow. Ten R uses machine learning. The ten R and the ten S camera are the exact same. The ten R just doesn't have the telephoto lens. It's pretty simple. Colin kicking it off with the let's get into the show. This is Gary V. Apple Watch Series 4 video. We filmed that. Yeah. I just haven't edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Okay. Finally has spoken. Stop the bitching. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fun fact. 10R portrait mode in low light is better because it uses the wide angle larger sensor than the 10S one does. Uh, yeah, the 10S uses the it uses both cameras. That's interesting you say that. Yeah, the 10S uses both cameras, and the 10R only has one camera. So has one lens. Hey Sam, buy well one lens, one camera. Is your are you close to the mic? I was. Why is the 10R thicker? That. Because okay, it has okay. a bigger battery. It actually is thicker. Do you need telephoto for video? I mean. I personally like have, having telephoto because sometimes you just need to be zoomed <laughs> is this in an optically. <laughs> Yes, this is an interview with chat. This is an interview, yes. Yes, I don't think you need the Red Bull. It's sugar-free. <laughs> are the days of waiting in line for iPhone over? Dead. Yes, they are. 100%. They're dead. Yes, those I'm days are not even, sure. That's not even a question. Oh, is this an intervention? No Twitch feels bad, man. All right, we're going to start. Why does this look so ass? Normal 360p. Oh, oh, it's because I was streaming th th uh, 1080 or 360. Stream health still says it's bad. Oh my god, this looks amazing. Holy crap. If you're watching this, please do yourself a favor and stream in 1080. Okay. Okay, here we go. I believe the screen of the 10R is the same as the 4S. Resolution-wise, yes. yes. Pixels per square inch. Pixels per inch, PPI, yes. Okay, lever stream PPI. looks really good. Okay, all right. Um, sorry about the rage. It's just... Um, you know, I get a lot of questions. I get a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot of questions. But sometimes, sometimes the best way to answer them is to just go explore for yourself. Okay, here we go. You ready, Colin? 
Yeah, ready, we Cosmo? are ready. Ready, Wanda. One, two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's great all right we have 250 people in here we have 3x twitch this is why we do it on youtube shouts to the twitch fam um hi all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of the phenomenal podcast experience it is wednesday my dudes october 31st 2018 happy halloween we're live in 368 we got dylan shine on the mic dylan say what up what up what up it's been a minute it's when, been a minute when, it's been when two was weeks. our last two weeks yeah, we took, we took last week off. We, me and Colin were at TwitchCon. Colin's also on the mic. Yep, right here. So Colin's on the podcast also. Colin's the guest on the podcast today from behind the computer <laughs> From station. behind the computer. Um, so me and Colin went to TwitchCon. We had Marquez on two weeks ago, our last episode. We're live on YouTube right now. And if you're listening to this in iTunes or Spotify or wherever. Podcast or uh, whatever, Wherever you listen to your podcast. Hello and thanks for listening. And today we're going to recap the Apple event. The Apple event yesterday took place in Brooklyn. We will talk about it in great detail. I was not there. Dylan was not there. Um, but we're both Apple nerds, and we can talk about this stuff um, in, 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 again, pretty good detail. So I guess to start, we can talk about the location of the event. So Apple does like two or three events a year. They do WWDC, which back in the day, well, it's still in June, but they used to announce the iPhones alongside until like the four or the four S they announced the iPhones at dub dub. Then they broke off from doing iPhones at WWDC. And then they started doing the September event. And then once they launched the iPads, they have the September or the, uh, the October event. And they also do one in March. Um, but it's interesting because they kind of differentiate every year. Like it's impossible to look back and nail exactly when Apple will do events. Like, will they do a March event? With new MacBooks? Well, I think first, WWDC is an event for developers. Like, it is a worldwide developers conference. Right. So, right. bring your mic down, Dylan. Just a little bit. Bring your mic. It's supposed to be like there. there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry, Bryce. There we go. Um, so, I kind of agree with them sort of transitioning the iPhone release off of WWDC because I think it should be focused on the software. I definitely, the reality is that the software is very much contingent on the hardware especially when they're every single year they're releasing a new version of uh, ios and that software is of course exclusively run on iphone ipad so i think logically it made sense at the time but when you're actually there and you see the environment it is not an environment it's not a product environment like you're speaking with engineers right it's a developers it's, conference exactly so yeah. i definitely you know having been there last summer um or this summer technically uh yeah definitely makes sense um but yeah it's cool the location i don't i feel like they new york is such a big tech hub yet app like the west coast in some capacity kind of like i don't want to say shuns it out but it's definitely not as a big not it does not take the center stage as let's say silicon valley you know norcal why do you think apple did an, an event in new york i think for some degree just to like switch it up a little pr switch you know but of course at the same time like new york is like very close to um san francisco as it relates to just like like city wise like city wise like i think they're i think new york's tech scene has really come a far away from like i think bloomberg was actually a huge proponent of that like mm -hmm. getting companies like google and facebook to commit uh big offices here you know apple if you're listening if you open up an office in new york I'm more than happy to you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the sessions. I think I think that was the deal because going to any Apple store here in like Manhattan, you'll see that those sessions that they do all the time are filled. Like, yeah, I definitely think that. So they're just celebrating. They just wanted to celebrate New York. Ter terms of and they've never done a, an event in New York, really. I would. I don't know the numbers on this. I'd, I'd be curious how many devices that they sell inside of New York opposed to. San like how Francisco. many people come to New York and buy yeah. Apple devices? I, think, I would think like a lot. I would else. think even a majority. And there's like five Apple stores now, six, seven Apple yeah. stores between Manhattan and Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I was taken by surprise when Apple announced it in Brooklyn. Sucks that I wasn't invited, but I'm, I'm not that salty about it because I streamed it live on Twitch. And I thought the event was great. There were a lot of good announcements in terms of like, as it relates to leaks, like, the Mac mini didn't really leak. Like th these devices didn't leak as hard as they usually do. So there was like, it was, it was nice to watch it live and, and kind of like be surprised in the moment, even though we like, 
you know, Bloomberg has always, they always have such good scoops because German works there. But um, yeah, I just, I really felt the energy. Like when Tim Cook came out on stage and there was just like this thunderous applause. And then like, he was just like, thank you, good morning. And then it usually stops. And it was just like another wave of applause. It was just so, I really felt the energy. And like, and, and I just remember watching the 10S event. I was just like, man, this is, this was boring. Like I made a video about it. I was like, I was whelmed at this event. So Tim Cook came out, opened up, and he was just, uh, again, like this ro roaring applause. And it was 10 in the morning also. Apple's events are usually 10 in the morning uh, West Coast time, and it was 10 in the morning East Coast time. So it was 7 in the morning for California, yeah. um, which, which is just interesting. But New York is alive 24-7, so that was cool to see. Um, and they had a ton of unfamiliar faces. Like they, they had, there was none of the regular Craig Federighi wasn't yeah. there. Johnny Ive has, hasn't been on stage in forever. Ever. And, um, Phil Schiller wasn't on stage either. It was nice to see some new faces on stage for Apple this year. And here's some new voices too. And here's some new voices. Yeah. Like in the product videos, mm -hmm. um, Johnny Ive didn't do any of the product videos, which was kind of surprising. Um, but let's, let's, let's get into it. Um, they kicked it off with the update to the MacBook Air, which, if you ask me, was very outdated. The display was 1440 by 900 on a $999 yeah, they just laptop. They haven't touched the machine They, they haven't forever. touched the machine in, in like three and a half years, four years. And in fact, I'm kind of curious there. So the MacBook as a product, in my mind when it had came out, was like, oh, this is the new MacBook Air. Like, I kind of accepted it as that. So uh, it was like two or three years ago, Apple released a product called the MacBook, and it was a 12, it is, it still exists, it's a 12 inch single USB-C port with headphone jack MacBook. Mm -hmm. And it came in gold and it had those new keys, the butterfly key mechanism came in gold, pink, space gray, and silver, I think. But it was really not great. It was very expensive yeah. and very slow. And they, they bumped it up once but they kind of just like left the MacBook Air in the dust. It just kept collecting dust over the years. And then Apple had the MacBook, which was like a 12 inch, like pretty expensive, very low end, very nice, but very low end. Then they introduced the, the 13 inch and 15 inch Pro with the touch bar. And then again, the MacBook Air was just sitting at the end. And then they also discontinued the 11 inch Air at some point. And now yesterday, they finally updated the MacBook Air. And I said this in my video too, it sits, it sits in an interesting position in the product lineup now because that MacBook Air is now better than that MacBook, I know, right? But my question is, maybe a question to you is, why do you think that was the case? Because mm -hmm. when you look at the MacBook, in, initially what I was saying is that like, I almost felt like it was the replacement for the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air kind of goes like dormant and then they think to themselves, hey, let's just ditch our MacBook and go back to the MacBook Air. I'm, I don't know, is it like a marketing thing? Did like the MacBook Air, I think the product sell better? I, and people I are like think, asking for I think it the MacBook Air is one of their best selling laptops. Yeah. And I, I mean, anecdotally speaking, I do not have data to back this up, but anecdotally speaking, like uh, when I was working at The Verge, that was kind of like this, the go-to, like they spec'd out a MacBook Air and it did everything you needed to do. Yeah. And it was thin and light and it had MagSafe and it had USB ports. and great laptop it's a, it's a fantastic just machine. that resolution is was just so bad and Daron, doughboy has a macbook air from 2011 he got an i7 in 2011 and it still works to this day mm -hmm. and we were just saying like now's a really good time to buy a macbook air like if you've had a macbook air and you're looking to like upgrade that exact machine because if you had a macbook air and you wanted another macbook air you kind of had to go for the 12 inch single USB-C port, yeah. MacBook direct regular. It wasn't, um, I think the, the MacBook Air is great. So let's, we can talk about some of the specs. Um, Dylan, you know about, more about these processors, processors than I do. Um, but I was talking to some people offline and they were saying, Apple says it's the 8th gen Intel i5 CPU, but it's like the U version or the yeah, Y it's, it's version. Like a well, I it's think, a modification of the chip. So I think one send, uh, sentiment is that why aren't they using the latest generation of chips the latest oh. generation of chips came out beginning of october um wait th that's ninth gen that's a ninth gen chip oh well i could probably so answer like, that by yeah. saying it's late development in the game, time right? yeah exactly yeah. So okay so development time so that's eight... that's first question answer. okay second question is of course like given the form factor of the, de of the device yes you cannot fit 
the desktop CPU, like that, like if you the know, big, you, the big ass chip, to, right? When yeah. you go on Newegg or Amazon, you order it for like, let's say this gaming PC over yeah. here. Um, from a form factor perspective, you cannot fit that in that. The, I mean, the laptop is super thin. So, of course, companies like Apple, Microsoft in the Surface or the Surface Studio, one of the two. Mm-hmm. What, what's that? What's the uh, the one that you have? Yeah, the Surface Studio. Yeah, exactly. Like they have essentially modified chips that fit within the specific form factors that okay. are gonna. Essentially, they are the same chip, but. Given us, given the constraints as it relates to just like cooling and other things, it's, they're just not going to get the full performance of the processor. And so they're like, essentially, a consumer can think about it as like a modified chip. You're not they're, gonna, they're underclocked. They're I think they're locked. They're, they're not even locked. clocked. Well, it has it says 1.6 gigahertz dual core Intel i5, uh, turbo boost up to 3.6 gigahertz. Yeah, so it's a good CPU with four megabytes of L3 cache. I'll say this Move for the again. for the form factor. And for the price, which I think it's what twelve hundred, starting uh, at twelve hundred. Entry price is yeah twelve hundred. I would say like, both just not alone on those two things, I do advocate and say it is a good product for what it is. I don't think it's. I don't necessarily think it's incredibly overpriced in comparison to the original starting price of the MacBook Air at nine ninety nine. Yeah, like you get such a better computer. I just for think the it's, it's a significantly better computer and a significantly like better design computer. Yeah, that. Warrants the and I, and I, I, I want to address the PC master race that's listening to this. That's just you're gonna spend thirteen hundred dollars on a day. like <laughs> like it's an Apple product. Yeah, it's expensive, but find me find me a better industrial design Windows machine. That, that's the whole thing. It's all comes down to like the software blended with the hardware and like the way the how long these things last too. Find me a better operating system. Like, yeah. <laughs> let's not let's not let's be real here. <laughs> let's be real here. Um, but I, but I will say the entry MacBook Air, only eight gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD. You need more than that. You uh, like? Yeah, I I definitely agree. I, I, I definitely think that cloud storage has become more so, prevalent so he, over time. He, he, yes, but here I'm I'm I I, I like my physical media. I like sure. to have my stuff accessible wherever I am. Don't like to depend on the cloud. And maybe that'll change once it gets more seamless. But I think in going into 2019, we are in the future. Like it is, it is late in the game. Okay. <laughs> sure. I don't think it's acceptable to have phones that start at like 64 gigs. I think phones should come in at 128 gigs. I think it's a little ridiculous to say. And then laptops like should t- 256. I'll say this. Like the fact that Apple is selling a flagship iPhone at 64 gigs in 2019. I know it's 2018 still, but it's, it's, sure. it's ridiculous. No, but like, I think, so I think there's a difference between actual quantity of memory. Mm-hmm. Well, there is, I'm definitively saying there's a difference between the quantity of memory and the speed at which that memory reads and writes from your device. And so, you know, I think we all would like to have as much capacity within our devices as humanly possible, mm-hmm. but, but I like definitely that one think, terabyte iPad. Sure. <laughs> sure. But I definitely think that there has to be a consideration in terms of like, actual what what type of memory is being put in what is the cost of this memory all right like, so that, that's what i want to add and we're, we're kind of whatever we're not getting super off topic but <laughs> but but but, that's, but but for you like for the average person does it does of, it cost like how what is the what is the price to silicon ratio of 64 gigs or 128 gigs like is it just well, well, price per gig double like how does that i think it depends so like i think a good example you know that little itty bitty yes yes your little, i have yes. a 128 gigabyte the size of a fingernail fingernail usb yes and that's great and yes. all but the speed at which that reads and writes from the computer like from that little thumbnail Slow. to the computer is a significantly slower to let's say when people think of like faster memory like ram ram is like extremely fast right and then, then you get down to the cpu and the cpu has its memory and that's even faster like yeah like so you're saying the types of memory the types of ssd that they're using i think of course like there's market research they say what are our products going to be used for how what is because they want to produce the product at the lowest cost and right but i'm just wondering like and the, to answer question paper, i don't know i don't know paper, the when apple when apple's doing its financials right when they're sitting there and they're gonna be like what is the entry level gigabyte capacity of the new iphone right and they're like if we do 64 it'll cost us this much well, are we looking at a difference of four dollars are we looking at a difference of sixty dollars i don't like, know but i would love to know the answer to it, that if someone out there knows the answer to that please send me a message i would love to know yeah i just i i think it's unacceptable to for for any company not just apple i think phones should start at 
I, more than 64 gigs. I just think if you're going to buy a 64 gigabyte iPhone, you will fill that phone up in a year. Does it go the opposite way though? Do you think consumers should have the option for it to be even smaller? Because in some cases, interesting. Yeah. In some cases, even, People just even don't for even... myself, like it's, I'm, I'm the, I'm the exact opposite, right? Like my life is in Dropbox pretty much. Okay. And it syncs. And I like for my phone, I choose what it syncs for all my computers. Sure. And so to think that sometimes like I don't need as much physical storage, but not only is that physical storage going to cost me more, but it's also very error prone in the event that you I, lose it or whatever. Yeah, phone, no, I know. Whatever, I know. Done I know. So, I feel like I'm definitely being a little bit tough and being a little bit of a stickler, but Google did an entire marketing campaign predicated on this. Yeah. Google Photos, take a picture, error, no storage left, blah, blah, blah. Like so many people still have iPhone 5, 5S, 6, whatever it is, 6S, and their phones are filled up because they got a 32 gig iPhone because they saved a hundred bucks. And it's like, that sucks. I yeah. really think that sucks. Anyway. But then they give you the option over and over and over again to just buy cloud storage. So right. Like, and they, they just keep reminding you, buy more iCloud, buy more iCloud. That's what I'm saying. Because you can't, you can't add the physical long game storage. Is that's, that's right. The, that's the cheapest is to have them have them be reliable for your data on their servers. If you're buying for basic use, Matthew C says, you probably don't need a $1,400 MacBook Air. I think that if you're, go, if you're uh, 17, 18 in college, like going to college, and you're looking to get a MacBook Air, I just think that you will fill up 128 gigabytes faster than you realize, and that eight gigs of RAM will, like, you should just get the 16 so you can kind of future-proof yourself for at least a couple of years. I feel like if you are a photographer mm -hmm. or somebody who plays you know, games. wears air power, someone asked. <laughs> who knows? Or, or if you play games, then smaller configurations don't make sense. But if you're just a college student and needs to write a Word document every other week, and are just browsing YouTube. You're, they're not downloading much. Everything's stream. Like Streaming. back in the day, for my biggest issue was like music libraries. On yeah, my fair. Everything's fair. going to Spotify and Title and other, you know, and Apple Music, of course. And so, I don't know. To some extent, I kind of agree with the smaller configurations. Like you don't. Okay. No, you, I li I like a I lot like the of difference. this. A lot of this. A lot of this content is now being streamed to you. You don't sure. necessarily need to go and down rent the movie in iTunes and physically download it. Only if you want to go on a plane. Sure. Or something like that, but Netflix and all these other services They're are allowing right. you to. They're, they don't take up physical streaming space. data is like the future, and while data is streamed, therefore you don't have to have a physical. It doesn't have to go on the hard disk, and right. therefore you don't have to have as much storage. I, I just I feel like consumers, you know, they're they're faced with the paradox of choice with the configuration options of these devices. You, you know, it's also a marketing thing for uh, sure. sure. Definitely, definitely. All right, so Apple <laughs> new MacBook Air. It's high resolution. I think the device is sick, and don't get me wrong. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast for the first time or you're like you're new to like the Sam Sheffer, Dylan Shine show, like we're both Apple fanatics, I would say, right? Like yeah. we're both big Apple fans. Um, but it's kind of like fun to to take the devil's advocate Sh on some of this stuff. Should we at the end of every product say buy it or not? When when you guys go to the, the end of each product, I'm gonna bring up like the actual prices too when you're talking. Okay, cool. I think we can, yeah. Okay, so would you would you do you think that do I recommend MacBook the MacBook Air? Air? Yes. Would you advocate for something? I'm just buy afraid it? of the March refresh. I I oh there's always like they do the silent processor bump like in four months six months sure. that 1.6 gigahertz more. can be the same price but that 1.6 gigahertz can be 3.2 sure. or whatever like I'm but I will say again if you're holding on with with dear life to a plastic whiter black plastic just whatever 2013 nasty macbook and you're looking to upgrade this is good yeah it sucks that they got rid of MagSafe. there's only two usb-c ports you will have to adjust yeah. dongle life it still has a headphone jack i will say like uh and I'm, I'm showing this live on the podcast um and you have the same macbook i have the 15 inch oh, yeah. with MagSafe. i i still can't believe that apple got rid of MagSafe. <laughs> it is like it is such an, a genius thing. It was very good. And the UX of MagSafe was very good. Yep. And because it has literally saved me at least five times in the two years that I've had this laptop where like I tripped over the wire, just whoosh, like, and otherwise you're ripping that laptop off, off the, table. the table. Yeah. Okay. If you're, if you're watching this live on YouTube, please leave me a comment and let me know how far your USB-C device flung when you tripped over <laughs> it because it got ripped off that desk. I'm sure. Um, so the MacBook has a high-resolution display. 
Um, it's like 240 or 270 PPI, so it's not even 300 PPI, but I'm four not, million pixels. I'm not counting. Uh, pretty good resolution display. It has a smaller footprint. It's got the third generation of the butterfly keys, which the outline tore that keyboard apart. I don't own one of those MacBooks, so I can't really speak on those. The key travel is very slim. It's a new butterfly. It's, it's different. It's I definitely different. think I've I've had both simultaneously, and I definitely think that. Um, it's something to get used to for sure. Five feet after a Fortnite loss. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There you go. Um, I definitely think that the, I was a bit at first when they put out the new keyboards and the new, uh, keys themselves, I think it was, um, I wasn't a huge fan. I d definitely like having used the, the chiclet keys, yeah, the the chiclet the keys far, for, far the, key for travel, like right? ever. Yeah. But it's something that you get used to. And I kind of, I think sure. now I definitely prefer it. And it allows the form factor of the machine just to be slimmer. Because Definitely. Not. Yeah, less, uh, less key travel. Yeah. Do you like the Gigantosaurus uh, trackpad? Uh, I'm actually, I do like the dive board trackpad. Like if it was up to me, the dive board have, track yeah. with a single button. Like, do you have, do you have force touch on yours? That's the new no, MacBook no, no. Air is. No, I have, yeah. I have a 2012 MacBook Pro. And oh. I, have, I love this thing, man. You like the clicky button? Hell yeah. So you, ne you never got used to the force touch track. Uh, well, I have, I had for work, I have a MacBook Pro, like a so, newest edition. So MacBook for me, Pro. I really like the force touch track, but it took me like a week and a half to get used to it first. When I, when I tell people how to use my laptop, I say, pretend you're pushing into skin. Like there is a, there's like a membrane in here that simulates a click across yeah. the whole thing. It's crazy. These, these laptops are the, the track pads are really impressive and they're all glass. I don't know why they made them so big on the new MacBooks. Yeah. They're seriously oversized. I have used them not for extended periods of time. When it comes time to get a new laptop, I, it's going to take a lot of getting used to. Four ninety nine from Dennis Voronin. What do you guys think about the removal of the glowing Apple logo? Well, thank you for the five bucks. It sucks that they removed the glowing Apple logo from the machines. Yeah. I think it is a signature, iconic like staple of an Apple product. Like what, like when you have your laptop in the cafe, it's like, Oh, the glowing Apple logo. Right yeah. now. It's just like a shiny piece of metal. Okay. I was thinking that they should have added it to, to the, the phone. IPhone. Exactly. That what I was going to so say, Dylan, cool. exactly. Cause I think they took it away from the laptop, put it back in a product somewhere. Right. That's signature Apple. And I think they could, and you know, what's crazy is there is a mod to do that in the iPhone. Really? Yep. There is a mod. Everything Apple Pro has a video where it even has like gestures where you can like tap it and the light will change. That's cool. It's cool. I really wish they did that to the phones. I'll just call it now. Just, just for fun. If you're in the middle of this podcast and you're like, what is Sam about to say? 2019 iPhone USB type C. That's the, for sure. They already put in the iPad. Like, and that's, Ooh, Dylan, you're confident in this too. I like I'm it. Super, okay. Well, like you got to think at a, at a point in time, when the new MacBook Pro came out, and it was they they just got USB C the whole thing, and, and they, got, they got rid of Display Port. Well, they okay, and I, I also just want to explain this to, to, the, to the viewers because I think this is commonly misunderstood. Okay, there are different data speeds between USB C USB protocols, a, right? Yeah. So, like the USB C reversible port has Thunderbolt 3 protocol inside it, which is, I'm pretty sure that's an Intel property, right? And then Apple licenses that from Intel. Or do they own I could, Thunderbolt? I could not tell you. I should have done research <laughs> about this. One but, is 40 gigs, one is 20 gigs right. per second. Right, so, so like, like there, there's a difference between the way the port is shaped and the amount of data that can be transferred between. So like this USB-A port on the side of my MacBook that is like the other end of your iPhone cable that you plug into the brick, that is USB-A. And there is a certain amount of data that can be transferred inside that type of connector at a, at a certain speed at a certain speed. And then, so USB C is not always USB 3.0. It's not o always Thunderbolt three, right? So the new MacBooks, when they did USB type C, it's also super fast data transfers. You can also power high resolution displays, right? So. I just wonder what the IO capabilities of the new iPhone will be if they're going USB type C. I think it's because isn't it more powerful than lightning? It's all contingent on the device itself. Right? Okay. Like if you want to project for USB C is case, the shape. Let me just interrupt you for a second. USB 3.1 is the protocol. Thunderbolt two and three are also protocols. DisplayPort is another. As someone says Apple owns Thunderbolt. It's, it's very confusing. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff going around. I think to answer your question, it's all contingent on the, the capability of the device from a processing standpoint. 
if it's going to be, let's say, allow you to project uh, an image onto, let's say, a third party monitor. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think to answer your original question, definitely USB, like Mac, the new MacBook Pro came out. It came with four USB C ports on it. At the time, no other products. The I, they were selling iPhones that would give you a USB USB Type A cable with it that you could not pl- plug into your new MacBook yes, Pro if, with the C. So correct. it was like it was dongle hell. Correct. And I think if you look at where Google's going with the Pixel and where other, every other company, everyone ever, is switching to USB C. And I think it needs to be ubiquitous because if you want to have third parties develop products for your product, that's right. You can't be siloed with your it's own. It's kind of the IP. same way that like micro USB became the standard for Android phones yep. and the same way USB a has been a connector, any brick, the jewel, your iPhone, it's all USB a. And I think that we are moving very quickly and Apple's helping lead the charge. It also helps that the OnePlus, uh, the Pixel, that the Red Phone, all of these mobile devices are USB-C. And then Apple said, "We're our pro laptop is now four USB-Cs. We can transition. We could talk about the Mac Mini after, but the iPad, we can talk about the iPad now. So we're still recapping the Apple event. We're still, we're still on track here. <laughs> yeah, um, it's been brand new form factor from the iPad. Um, I go right to the iPad because the new form factor on the iPad is it's amazing. It's gnarly. It is absolutely. Wait, you guys got to do the the buy or sell for MacBook Air first. Buy or sell. MacBook I said Air, buy. buy. Buy easy. Buy. Go. I would just say. I would just say. Be wary oh, of the no. of the RAM and of the storage. But I don't know if you're like a you know a media consume consumer person like me that has. It's not going to be that crazy. Like of course, like we all want to go in and buy a product that we know mm-hmm. is the best and that like. I think a laptop the should at least last you five years. But I think if like, you buy the I laptop, bought... it's going to last you five years for sure. But in terms of like, you're, you're stuck with 128 gigs. Well, that's, that's a whole other conversation. Right. But in terms of like, the only thing that's really going to bump is the processor, yeah. I would think. And we'll see what happens in March. We'll come back in with, March, with another but episode. I definitely think see. that, you know, we all want to buy products and make sure that they're the latest and greatest and that sure. they're not going to be superseded. Sure. Um, but I definitely think y- you're, you're fine regardless. Okay. But what about Touch ID? Touch ID. Oh, yeah. We forgot to say Touch ID on the Mac. I... So I was FaceTiming one of my friends yesterday who has that laptop and he opened the laptop and just put his finger on the thing. And I was like, you know, as troll of a, like, it's, it's such a small change, but I think it, it has, it's great. It's huge. When you're like installing software that needs to have your password, have to, you yeah, just you, go, I'm just going like, to pay for something, paying for something. It's just, it's just so troll. How like, <clears throat> how hard is it to hit 10 characters versus put one finger on? But like the the amount of time you save doing that, however, you know, six, seven yeah. times a day going into your computer. Apple Pay integration is yep. really so good. You it can, is. It's yeah. Apple Pay. You can sign into your computer like that. Um, New security <clears> chip <throat> too. What? New security chip too. Oh, yeah, the T2 like, chip. You know, that Apple went as far. I don't know if you saw this. Apple put out a security statement about the T2 chip that said it specifically blocks microphone access from, from third, third parties. Party. Yeah. Now, I don't know why... Apple would specifically mention microphone access from a device when no one is listening to you from your microphone. Why would Apple go as far to issue a statement about your microphone in your computer? I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's that, an open-ended question. Another I, I don't there. know. That's another episode. That literally is another episode because that <laughs> happened to me like last weekend. What? The whole thing. I was. What was I talking don't, about? Don't keep it up here. Keep it like I'm, right keep, down here. Keep more, you keep putting it in front of your face. And it's just I'll, you're just eating. All right, all right. I'll Wait, what happened mic. to you last week? I'm telling you, like I had a conversation. Oh, oh. Did let's not... talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. We're we're live on the podcast. Let's just do it. Okay. Um, what was I talking about though? That's the real question. You're probably talking about a beer or something. <sighs> what was I talking about? A hotel. While we do that, a MacBook beer. Air is a buy. MacBook everybody, Air is a buy. Everybody, okay. MacBook Air. I was talking about something. In just with my phone at present, I never once Googled went on it. Google. Mm-hmm. Never, it was just a conversation, and it's not even something that was in the realm of something similar to what I would be searching. Or like they couldn't go through my cookies, and like it was just like so off topic. Yep. And I literally, I'm at, on I'm at my girlfriend's place, and I'm like, look, like we we literally had this conversation a day ago. Yep. And now in my feed yep. as an advertisement on Instagram. Yep. yep. That's we got to do an episode on that. Just. Dude, it's so real. It's so real. And it's funny because I've tweeted about this. 
like I started my tirade, like right when I left the verge. And I remember like when I would tweet about this, the verge guys would call me insane. And there's like, they were like, there's no way Facebook's doing this. It would be the biggest revelation ever. You know how many revelations we've seen in the past two years of just like, we see one every week. Yeah. It's like literally there's once a week, there's week. this crazy thing that happens and everyone forgets about it. Mm -hmm. Like anecdotally, if you're watching this live on YouTube, Type in some stories. Tell me if you've had a conversation about something and then it shows up. Oh, there's confirmation bias. There's all these psychological phenomenons that, oh, maybe you searched it. Maybe this. Screw all of those. They're listening and they're serving you ads about what you're talking about. There's no way they're so hyper-targeted. It is just impossible. It is impossible that it is so coincidental. Yeah. Who is this guy and why should I care? <laughs> Weston just gave us 10 bucks. <laughs> Weston, what up, dude? Let's move to the iPad. Regular <laughs> iPad and then we'll go to Pro. Um, the iPad. iPad's very cool It happened device. to me for sure. I started getting ads in Spanish after practicing Spanish on a pirated Rosetta Stone. <laughs> There's no connection between me and being Hispanic. And all of a sudden, I got those ads. I talked about a band with my dad. And five minutes later, I got a Facebook ad for concert tickets to that band. It's not just me. It's not. It's everyone. It's it is. Everyone. It's happening. It's a real thing, and we just have to prove it. Or they have to come out and say it's happening. Serious question. Why not just buy a Chromebook? You're paying 1K to hold extra aluminum uh, because I want an uh, uh, operating system Chrome that, OS. Has, that has depth. <laughs> like, Chrome OS has, has uh, breadth, but the depth... I think Chrome OS is cool. I think It's cool. No, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. But, like, can you edit a 4K video in Premiere with Chrome OS? Can no. you even launch Premiere? I <laughs> <don't think so. laughs> exactly. That That's is the question. Point. I put it down to a coincidence and how everything they collect on you really does anticipate your needs. It's science. Okay, there, there's Mark Duffy. There's definitely people that will say that. They collect all of your data. They see all your phone calls. They see your Google searches. They see who you hang out with, blah, blah, blah. But there's definitely, so my story is, this was like a while ago when I made, if you remember this YouTube video, I put it out at the end of 2015 when I had a shaved head when I filmed videos in my old apartment. I was on the phone with my friend Rob talking about his bachelor party in Las Vegas on, on the phone. And then we were talking about bachelor party in Las Vegas. I hang up the phone no longer than 10 minutes later. I go on Instagram and there's an ad for the win. Like, what is that? I didn't search for anything on the phone prior. But I had you a said phone. Vegas and then the win hotel. I said Vegas. People, are, no, ads. Sam, you forgot what you Googled before. No, I didn't Google anything. We had the call and then I was going to go do research. So look, we'll see. I, 2019 will be the year that this all kind of comes to the surface. I really, I feel like it's coming. It's definitely coming. <laughs> it's it, it, coming. It's, the, the, revel, the revelation is coming. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Face ID on a MacBook? I think we'll see it too. The MacBook cams are absolutely garbage. They're just, they are, they yeah. are absolutely, what, what do they call them? They call them like, uh, do they call them I, trash eyesight cam. cam, trash cam. <laughs> they call them like eyesight cameras now or something. Yeah. Man, I love podcasting because we're just having a regular conversation. There's 330 people watching and then there's all these people listening after too. I, I absolutely love podcasting. All right, let's get back on track a little yes, bit. Yes, iPad, iPad, regular iPad, 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 iPad. first. All right, iPad's cool. I think the new form factor is awesome. I love the, the hard edges. And that's only on the Pro. Well, you have the two. Um, what? The, pro. The, hard, the hard edges are only on the Pro. So iPad there's the pro. regular iPad. So, God, they also just like completely. They're marketing the, the regular iPad towards the, like the, kids the regular and iPad and... used to be called the iPad Air. Yeah. And then they changed it to just iPad. So it still has the home button. There's an iPad that you can buy that still has the home yeah. button. But now the iPad Pros, they got rid of like that kind of like curvy the side. Concave. See, this is why I wanted you to get yours, but whatever. Um, now I have it up on the do you, screen. Do here. you have the okay? So you have it up on the screen. Like, I could show you guys this. If it the, okay, yeah, that's the regular iPad with the curved edges. Um, Everybody's seeing but, this. But the well. the new iPad Pro, they kind of flattened out the whole thing. It still has a camera bump. But man, wait. This... So are we talking about the iPad Pro? Or are we talking about? Yeah, the we're iPad? talking about the iPad Pro. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. I didn't, they didn't talk anything new about the iPad yesterday. It was just the iPad Pro. Um, so the iPad Pro in the video has the person like rubbing their finger against and melting the aluminum off. Did you see that video? I didn't. The product video for the iPad Pro is so sick. Um, I really like the design. I watched Marquez's video. He was like, it's strikingly thin. I haven't seen it yet in person, but. Apple's always been so good at giving you this, like, you're basically holding a screen that is has touch interface, and the speakers are great, I'm sure. The device itself, again, is so unbelievably thin and light, and it could stand on its sides now, which is so sick. 
Remember the iPhone 5 and the 5S and the SE had like the body that you can stand it up? Yeah. It really reminds me of that device. Um, so iPad Pro, A12X Bionic, insane it's processor. A very, it's a very powerful device. Can you talk about some of the the aspect, well, the, the technical X aspects of that? Bionic, <laughs> essentially that they put like a neural network chip inside of it to further leverage machine machine learning capabilities uh, within the device. It also has an eight core processor and a seven core GPU. Um, it's a powerful device. They said it's not, it's powerful than more than 92% of personal <laughs> laptop computers. Which is nuts. So right? I think it's, I think it's a great device for an individual who doesn't necessarily need to interface with like a traditional operating system, what I'll consider like a desktop operating system, but still wants to leverage like, you know, you can edit photos just as well with the Adobe suites. You know, it's a very powerful device in a very small form factor. You have the ability to mirror it to third party displays. And um, has USB-C now. And USB-C. Yep. So like <clears throat> overall, I was, I think that was Excuse one me. of the products that m impressed me the most. The iPad. And, yeah. and I think in terms of a product from its predecessors, like it has gone the furthest and up in relation to the other products that I've seen. Apple there was a out. really good tweet yesterday that I saw that was like in the eight years of iPad engineering, we it's like 5,000 times faster, 50% thinner. Like they just like basically said first iPad compared to the newest iPad pro like for them, excuse me, to, to kind of engineer and develop that much and that far in such a relatively short span of time is, is incredible. And I had the original iPad and honestly, it really, I remember holding it in my hand. I was like, this is cool, but it's really not that great. It was thick. It had the, it had the 30 yeah. pin connector yeah. low resolution display, very chunky. But I was like, man, this is just a gigantic iPhone now, especially, especially with, with the new gestures and like the multitasking capabilities with the iPad. Um, I think they're future proofing this iPad. I saw some chat on Twitter with like Steve Stroud, Steve Trown Smith and Guillermo Rambo. And like, they're, they're like super nerd developers. Um, apparently there's supposed to be new springboard elements that are coming out. Like they're supposed to be redoing springboard and really, yeah. Yep. And, um, iOS 13 might bring those changes. They were, we were supposed to see them in iOS 12, but instead this is like all Bloomberg reporting. Instead they focused on really tightening iOS 12. Cause remember how buggy the OS is used to be yeah. like iOS 12 is extremely tight OS. And I feel like, um, there's, they were saving a lot of the new software elements for the new iPad when iOS 13 comes out because you remember like it's always funny watching them do WWDC and then they show off the capabilities but they're not running on any new devices just yet right so like they put out the betas, Apple the Apple out. right yeah. they put out the betas but then like iOS 12 ships with the September iPhone right and yeah. then like iOS 13 is there going to be another new iPad before iOS 13 comes out? Or will the iPad, I think the iPad is ready for iOS 13 right now. I don't know. But will they, re will they release iOS 13 at DubDub or e do something special for 2019? So this is, this is, there's two things that are going to happen at yep. WWDC in my mind. So at this year's WWDC, we called it like a rebuilding year. Even when we were there, there wasn't like, I think AR Kit 2 was very cool and some other things that they had announced at WWDC. But from, from a developer standpoint, it was very much a rebuilding year. Two really monumental things I think are gonna happen next year at WWDC. One is iOS 13 and all the new features as it relates to, the new features relates to iOS. I don't think the new iOS 12 really like was a huge game changer. I definitely no. think like they took the time and ironed out a bunch of issues that they had. That's but, what they did. They focused so on bug squashing, yes. That's gonna happen. Yes. And then f from a developer standpoint, Swift 5 is going to be released, which is going to give ABI stability, which is going to essentially, you're going to see a lot more native uh, apps developed by Apple done for purely in Swift. And that might not mean anything to anyone, but for your iOS developer, it's a pretty big deal. Okay. Do you think that we will ever see a, a shift in schedule? This is just fun speculation um, from Apple. Like, because they always do all four software pillars at the same time at WWDC. Could they release like a special 
you know, iOS 12.2 just for iPad Pro. If you have the new iPad Pro, you get these like crazy new features. Or do they wait all the way until June? And then what? Then they put out another iPad in October? I I would hope. And because I, this iPad Pro is so powerful. Yeah, but I, I'll say this. Like, I would hope that they would, like, because currently they're all on hard de deadlines, right? Yeah. It's like you have, there's an expectation that at the beginning of June, they're going to hold the conference and they're going to yep. release everything. There's a lot of times where they say they're, they're working like, Hey, we're working on multiple people on FaceTime. It doesn't come out like where's, you know, it didn't well, come yeah, out. It didn't come out. FaceTime initially. just hit in, at the end of October. Exactly. And we talked about it in June. Exactly. So, yeah, true. you know, I think, and if that's really the case, then like what I was going to say is that I would hope that they would extend product like deadlines in order to like, ship fuller products yeah because it feels very hard coded as it relates to it has to be out that's right it has to be that's right and and it just seems like apple does things systematically on and routinely until they don't right like apple mm -hmm. does uh, uh my friend Chaim, who works at the verge told me this he was like apple does things until they just don't right so like you have this for me i have this expectancy of again like dub dub in june september event iphones october event and then maybe the mystery march event but like what's stopping Apple from in December being like, Hey, the Mac pro is ready. Hey, AirPods two, Hey, uh, air power, you know, like mm -hmm. they could, but I don't know. I it's, definitely also think it's heavily relying on like the product cycles and as it relates to how times of the year that the, buy, the consumers are going to buy correct. the product. That's why this iPad pro is going to be, mm -hmm. I think such a smash hit because holiday sales yeah. is this quarter boom. IFA, uh, iPhone 10 S 10 R holiday quarter also ipad pro up to a terabyte now there's an 11 inch version which has a smaller footprint than the 10.5 and then the 12.9 um also has a i think it's a little bit of a smaller footprint too mm -hmm. um but so when when me and colin were at twitchcon they were you know working on everland working on the game and there was like a bunch of ipads and i was just like dicking excuse me i should not curse on the podcast <laughs> but um, i was just messing around with the ipad pro 12.9 inches for a device it's is huge. incredible to, to really hold something in your hand that is 13 inches that is so thin and powerful. It's awesome. I'm going to go, the, I'm going to the Apple store next week and I'm going to see that iPad pro in person. Like it is, it is razor thin, not quite razor thin, but it is dang thin. It, is it thinner than the iPhones? I don't even know how thin That's it is. That's a good question. Um, it looks, it looks thinner than the iPhones. It's 5.9 millimeters or 5.6 .6. and, yeah, and one, it's one basically the size of a sheet of paper i forget which one yeah. is the size of a, like a, like uh, a basic yeah. a12 or yeah a, a yeah, a yeah a regular or... kind of paper um ipad pro really good buy um it just sucks because apple's so good at like making you feel bad about your purchase i bet so many people have like they bought the ipad pro last year when it was like all these great things happened to it mm -hmm. and now it's like a new body new gestures USB-C, and you're just like dang it i just spent 970 dollars <laughs> on this thing like now i'm stuck you know yeah. so which one like, do you buy though that's the question like 7.99 the smaller one or 9.99 i think you go to the store <laughs> yeah and hold them i first I, you first you you open your bank account on your, <laughs> yeah, on your, web, on your web browser. You consult your spouse and say, honey. Talk to the accountant. Yep. Make sure that the funds are there. Yep. You know, make sure the credit card's not going to. These devices are not cheap by any means. Like Apple devices are always so expensive. But I think this one brings something useful to the table, though. Like it's it's super fast. The the smaller. So no, what no, is no, the new iPad Pro. What does it start at? 999. For 9 .9. how many gigs? 64? Yeah. Oh, don't rage, Sam. Don't rage. <laughs> Like, how is the iPad starting at 64 gigs? How much more money would it cost Apple to do? <laughs> it's a two, <laughs> almost a $200 bump for 256. And then what does it go up to? 512? Uh, it go straight yep, to... Yep, 512 for and then, almost and, $1,400. And then and one then terabyte one is one what? One terabyte is $1,600. So, okay, so, no. so how much... Seven, so how much, is the, how much is the smaller iPad LTE uh, one terabyte? Okay, smaller iPad LTE one terabyte? Yeah. All right. What? A two, is it up to two grand? You want the one terabyte yeah. LTE? One terabyte, uh, one terabyte $1, LTE. Seventeen hundred dollars. Okay, and then what do you add to get the larger one? Uh, let's see. The difference for the larger one is only two hundred dollars. So you're paying two, over two grand after tax for yeah. for a maxed out two grand after tax. That's nuts. But who's buying a completely spec'd out? If you own I a mean, private people are. People yeah. are. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm <laughs> not personally, fully, yeah. but somebody I, is. It's, somebody it's just crazy is. to think like. Man, how much money do you make a year 
for you to just go to an Apple store and spend two grand on a product that will be outdated in one year. Like that, it just hurts my body. <laughs> like if you're gonna buy an iPad, I think you'll be good. Do they make a 256, sorry? Or no? Hmm? Do they make the 256? Uh, yeah. Okay, they make a 256. I don't think you really need the LTE. Um, there was someone that tweeted me the other day that was like, is it possible to only do iPad with LTE? Like if you figure out a way to forward your phone calls, yeah. right? And then you have the iPad Pro, you have iMessage, right? You mm. hold a brick to your face. Correct. Yeah. Or you just use People AirPods. Like, is it possible to, and we're getting off the rails. All right, here, if you jailbreak it, probably. It, no, 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 you don't even need to jailbreak it. For, but you don't have a phone. Use WhatsApp. All yeah. Right. No, but you don't, but Something. I'm saying like, if you wanted the phone app on your iPad. You don't have a way for people to call you. Yeah, That's like, what I'm saying. You use Google voice, you forward, you would get a burner phone and forward your, I guarantee you somebody has jailbroken it and you can do that with a jailbroken iPad. So the, the iPads with LTE <laughs> don't give you a phone number. However, the watch gives you a phone number, which is interesting. Really? The Apple LTE watch, it gives you like this phone number, but it just, when someone calls you, it has its own phone number. But when someone calls my phone number, the watch rings too, hmm. but the iPad with LTE, you can't get like a, phone number it's just lte no, connectivity it's, it's, it's data just a, it's just like it's just a data. wi-fi hub essentially it's just a glorified wi-fi i hub. i think there is some sort of like future in which like people ditch the phone and they just have you pick like phone or tablet yeah phone or tablet but no one's holding up the thing to their face <laughs> and making phone calls that way um so Thank ipad you. ipad pro i like it a lot i like it a I lot too really I, like I'm, I mean i'm getting one so I'm You're definitely one. getting one? I mean, 100%, yeah. Okay. Flex over here. Fle Weird flex, but okay. Weird flex. Weird flex but okay. Uh, I'm definitely going to go to the Apple store next week. I might even just film a hands-on video with the <laughs> iPad next week just to give my impressions. Um, it just leads me to believe, and I just, I hope, I hope that the new iPhone body is redesigned and it's like that Like the iPad? Like the iPad. Mm -hmm. Because this is the first time, really... Uh, like oh, one shit. of the, that phone is just trashed already. Um, I think this is one of the first times that the iPad Pro is leading the like engineering industrial design. I just think it's, I just think it's new. I definitely think that, you know, the iPhone 4 definitely like, it's really, if you think about it, the iPhone, the iPhone 4 had a very similar design to the current iPad correct, Pro. Correct, correct. And so it was a 5. All, all that it really comes down to is like the was edges. Was it a 5? No, it was a 4. four it was, was the, the 4. 4 had the four. metal, 4 and 4S had the metal band with the glass sandwich smush at 3.5 inch screen with the lock button on the top. And then the iPhone 5 went to 4 inches correct. and they did the, it was, a, it was called Slate. And then they also did silver, and then they also did champagne. But in terms of the actual side, like yes. you, could, you could still stand both. The of them. four, yes, the four was a little bit different because the uh, the metal band around the four was the only thing touching the table, and then the glass was like ever so slightly recessed. Yeah, I, I, whereas the entire man, this is why I had this like weird idea where I'm like. I'm gonna buy every single iPhone ever just to have every single, like I want a 2G, I want a 3G, 3GS, 4, 4S, and just to be able to have them and recall them because eventually they're gonna be impossible to find. Well, no, they've made millions of they've them. They've made a lot of them. It and would just be really- People are recycling them. It would people be, are recycling people them are definitely lot. recycling them. And that, that we can also talk about that. Um, I just, I have this fantasy of having a display case of every single iPhone sealed, which would be so sick. Just to have oh, every man. every iPhone in the plastic. I have a pair of original spectacles. Somebody, that are still somebody sealed. go on eBay right now and find the price of a sealed iPhone. Right, yeah. a sealed iPhone two G is like fifteen hundred bucks, two Ooh. grand. Like Ooh. you cannot find those things sealed anymore. And like a, a really good one in good condition, you're paying hundreds of dollars for it. Um, I don't know if you saw this, Dylan, but the new MacBook Airs and also the new iPads are hundred percent recycled aluminum. Very cool. I which think, is, which I think is cool. Apple has really done a good job of like trying to incorporate the green, green earth friendly yes. mm -hmm. processes and how yes. they actually make the devices yes. using renewable energy to actually like power the facilities that are, you know, selling and manufacturing the, pro uh, the products. It does make them look better when you bring up like Foxconn stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, like, had, they a, had their, I mean, with Foxconn and literally they had like the suicide nets put yeah, up that's, that's so because the people up. are like but that's living. All, I'm sure they fixed that by now, I right? think, I or think it's a little bit more, I'll say this. I think it's more than just Apple. I think, you know, it could be also very heavily 
reliant on China and how yeah China, well like we don't have to yeah, get into that right I mean, now. That, that's like a whole labor laws prac like discussion and that's all a right whole. I think a, all right a product that I'm really impressed with that is we the Mac, Mac Mini. Mini transition iPad Pro goodbye goodbye buy okay. it if you good know. goodbye not goodbye but <laughs> goodbye goodbye yeah, yes <laughs> um Mac the product that I'm super excited about and I think I think it's a great product is the Mac Mini why Okay, first the form factor is, is incredible. It's cute. It's like seven. It's like a, it's like the it's older like brother to an square. Apple TV. Really. Yes, yes. So it's like, like the older, more mature, like col- yeah. graduated from a good college, like <laughs> has a nice car, and the little brother's like, I just failed math class. <laughs> yeah, it it has a lot going on with it. It has a desktop quality CPU in it. It's an eighth gen CPU, but it's still like you can have a four core processor, six, six core cores. processor. It has everything you'd ever want on the back of it. USB C, USB A, internet. Yeah, it has Ethernet, four USB Type C, HDMI, two USBs. Like it is. It's good. You'd hope that you'd find a Display Port on it, but uh, you know, you're not. It's not really like a. You don't really need the extra frame rate. But in terms of a product, the size of it, the capability of it, and the price of it, yep. in comparison to other products, I definitely think that, like, in my mind, if you were like, let's say, an iOS developer, and you just wanted a small like machine to run your builds and yep, to do your station. development work to have like a workstation it's yep. a great product it's for that. like 800 bucks that thing will can sit on your desk for literally five years and run just as smooth yeah. as it did day one the mac so, mini is a, is a super solid product you think you think they did well with that product i'm happy i'm happy that they're revamping it cool because i definitely think when the original one came out it was just so cool it's like you have the full capability of the mac yeah in a little, in a box. little tiny form factor. And so yeah. Colin, Colin was interested in the Mac mini um, and no one can answer this question still. And I don't think you can Colin, but could you take a Mac mini, put it in your bag and then use an iPad pro as a display for your Mac mini. So you would carry the Mac mini and the keyboard and mouse and then use it a 13 inch iPad as a display. I don't think you can use the iPad as, as a display, but here's the thing. You can use the iPad as a display with uh, application. There are programs yeah. out there that you can, like Duet or Airfoil or whatever. My it's whole called. thing is like with the new USB C. Like, can I put a USB C to USB-C HDMI dongle? Or HDMI, on? I'll right? say this: if you are an individual who owns both an iPad Pro and a Mac Mini and use them individually, and in some instances would like to put them together, I think yes, you will probably find an application to jerry rig them both. However, natively you, it won't. If you are natively, yeah. Like I don't think app the operating systems both iOS and iOS Mac won't OS, let. I don't think it, but, that's a thing. But but you can with programs. But, but with programs, not natively with the operating systems. But if you're just looking to do that, there are a lot cheaper options for a display. Yes, but than here's the iPad. thing. But like Colin, you're already getting the iPad, right? Yeah, so like I have if to get you wanted a mobile display, like you want a mobile display, well, and a well, battery. like the thing is that 13 inch iPad is a display. I know yeah. it's only 13 inches, but it is a damn good display. It looks great. It's literally, it, I mean, it's not that's, that it's, far off from the size of this monitor I'm looking at right now. That's yeah. like a 20 something that's a 24 inch. inch no, and and, no, and with, the, with the, with the, with the slim okay. bezels, that's that amazing. iPad is insane. Yeah, it's cool. It's like a portable display. Yes. That has a full version of iOS and an insane processor inside. Right, so when you combine that with the, yeah, I, I, Colin, I think the answer is going to be a sad no, uh, but like out of the box, no. But the problem is that like, you would want. I'll just go to the Apple Store and buy them and let you know. <laughs> and just do it. Can you do this? Can you do and it? And then you just and we'll can't, and then it's like, okay, that's the video. And then what? I buy like one of their 4K displays or something. Yeah, it's, and then... it's, it's interesting. Where is the where is the cinema display? Is that gone forever? People have been asking for that forever. I I would I would hope to say that. Maybe that would be another March product, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it they, is a super popular product. And they and they put the LG 5K, like they show that and they sell it at the Apple Store. That is like their little, mm-hmm. like when they want to show off the capabilities of the I.O. of their new computers, they have it plugged into a 5K LG display. Why the F does Apple not do their own cinema display I think anymore? That, I don't know. I definitely think that companies like LG, Asus, especially like displays are as we all know like extremely prevalent within like the pc sure. desktop gaming sure. industry but also there's like musicians and like live productions yeah. that you know are powered off mac minis that use these like regular old displays i'll say 
the only the the only difference, right? If you, if I look at all of Apple's products, the one thing that stands out is that a display does not run a proprietary Mac operating system where all of their other things do. So can you justify purely paying a premium for the exact the exact resolution pixel quality that you could get going to a competitor at a cheaper price? Because at the time that the Thunderbolt display came out, like it was pretty overpriced in comparison to what you could have bought yes. by another company. But then I counter that, Dylan, and I ask, what about the 5K iMac that exists? Why can't you just remove the guts and give no, me that display? Right, well, the 5K iMac is unique is because the only reason they can achieve the 5K resolution is because the motherboard is essentially soldered to the display allowing for like, like that is- To push those pixels. Exactly. So it's it's the 5K. We'll wait till 2022. Sure. All right. We'll we'll just wait a couple more years. The we we didn't mention about the iPad because it has USB-C. You could charge your phone with the iPad now. That is that's an awesome feature. How many times your bros like, yo, you're full battery. I'm at nothing. Yeah. Like, give me some juice. Can yeah. I siphon some gas yeah, yeah. from your iPhone? It's crazy. Very cool. I definitely think that's a really awesome feature that they've added. I I really think so too. Um, so Mac Mini. I like it a lot. Goodbye. I a good goodbye. I really think that all of the products they put out in this It was a great event. It was a good event. It was a really good in event. I was not as stoked on the iPhone event. Me um, neither. I really did. In comparison didn't. to the iPhone 10. But with but all, the iPhone 10 leaked also. Sure. But not even from a leak, from a product standpoint, from like a product gap standpoint in terms of the improvements that they've made. Yeah. I wasn't like, but oh I mean my here's God, the thing. Here's it. the thing. When you look at it really simply, we the MacBook Air hasn't gone on a refresh in four years, right? The yeah. MacBook Air should have had a high-res display in 2015. No, but that's the thing is that they ditched it. They made the MacBook. They're like, eh, MacBook. Oh, really right, MacBook right, Air. right. And now it's going to happen with that MacBook. Single USB-C I port. think it's done, though. How old is the Mac Mini? This just refreshed. Wasn't it from 2012? The last yeah, one it's was been a while. Oh, it's been a too. while. That's since insane. They, and a lot, of, and a lot really. of people are like, I love my Mac Mini. Yeah. And they still have them. I there's I yeah. have professional people in, like, in the that audio they industry run, that still run, like their run their stuff stations off, of them. Yeah, off Mac Yeah, Home yeah. theater setups too. Now, what so, is this display? Look at this. What is that display? Yeah, what is that? Exactly. It's unbranded. I don't it's unbranded. And it's face gray. Yeah. I don't know. Dude, surprise December event. Rumors. No, I, I mean, it would be, <laughs> I think it they would could make cool. a very beautiful display. I would love it if they like made a display that could compete with like the 4K Asus 144 hertz yes, monitor. Yes, yes. Why doesn't Apple, I don't, I don't give a damn how much it costs. Apple should do the Apple display, whatever hyper retina, whatever they want to brand it as 4K 144 hertz. Just do it. Question. Yes. Should they do a TV? You know, when, when I was at The Verge, we went so back and forth. Before the whole car thing started, it was the TV. Yeah. Apple's doing a display. Apple's doing a television. Apple's buying a TV network. Apple's doing a streaming network. Apple, like, should they make, but then I counter again and say, what is a TV? Dead serious, what is a TV? Honestly. Nobody uses TVs anymore. But what is, I just made a video about this too. Like, what is, <laughs> what is, a, what is a TV? Is a TV a display that has content kind of built in because a, a display like this, you need to power it and give it content, yes, right? These Asus displays, the cinema yes. display, the LG display, there's no operating. Built in smart there's no, option. there's no. There are, in new, in, in newer TVs, there are operating systems. But those, they're horrible. Cool. They're all, all right, they're, they're, they're trash. Can, I agree, they're trash. You could use those, right, they're all like 60 hertz, whatever. You could use those TVs as a computer monitor, but like you no couldn't. one wants to use a 47 inch computer monitor, right? Yeah. No, no, I think. First, your first question, what makes a TV a TV? It's definitely like- We are so off the rails here, but who cares? <laughs> and we are, we are an hour and eight minutes into this. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> Wow, fine. it's getting lit. Anyway, should we just leave it at that? Like, No, 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 no. We're, we're going. Okay, TV question. The TV answer is yes. like, of course, a television set is a device that can take in various forms of input. It's Correct. The first thing, it has to take in input and- and that has evolved in terms of the types of input that you can actually. I just want to interrupt myself. I just realized that. Interrupt like, myself? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I want to interrupt. Poor Dylan. My, my, Poor I, want interrupt, I want to interrupt. Sorry. I want to interrupt you, Dylan, by, by saying that, like, when you had DLP TVs or, like, when the first LCDs were coming out, they were not smart TVs. No. They were just, like, again, it's the same thing as this monitor, right? Oh, and then you plugged, in your, you plugged in your cable box. Now the TV kind of has, like, an operating system Correct. and content built into it. Correct. So, so that notion is changing. Yes. And I think, like, to define what a TV is now, TV 
is very tightly coupled with this notion of a cable provider yes. or a TV box or receiver provided to you by not the TV manufacturer, but by a third party Correct. cable provider Correct. to provide you content. I think as time goes on, as a smart TV has become smarter and that live streaming is going to become more relevant as, as a means of how we watch the content. Um, you know, I think your traditional TV is going to change. I definitely think that a company like Apple, given the UX that you have on the Apple TV, applied to a display would be a fantastic product. Like, I think that when I look, I have a Samsung smart TV. I've used an LG. I've used the Sharp. I've used the board. Vizio. Yeah. Vizio. They cannot compete. Samsung arguably could compete on this. You're saying with the show. operating system that is Apple yes, TV? At, in terms of like the TVOS. engineering effort, in yeah. terms of the pure engineering like effort the, the that a company UI, like, like Apple yeah. could put forth to create a TV is, in my opinion, far superior. Okay, but then again, what is a TV? The operating system plus display. From now, like now, like moving forward, the TV, TV would be the operating system plus, plus display, display plus the ability to put in your cable box. Okay. What we want so, to in the so future is that your TV will hook up directly to your Wi-Fi and the operating system will be what it is, and you'll TVOS, be and in you'll theory. and you'll pay providers like YouTube TV yep. or whomever over the top services, and they will stream you your channels. Yep. You'll no longer have a uh, dedicated cable that goes into your box specifically for. It will connect streaming. to the Wi-Fi, and yes. then it'll have the YouTube app and the this app, and then it's like you already pay for YouTube Premium, like you're already signed yes. into your iCloud account on your Wi-Fi. It's just automatically that Apple has their single sign-in thing with the yes. Apple TV. There, I think, will be a day that Apple has their own streaming service. Apple is spending billions of dollars. They have the content. They have the. They already right. have the repository of videos. That's right. They already have. They have already done Apple Music. Right. They have the repository. They have Apple Music. There's going to be Apple TV, which is Apple TV. Yeah. Right. They're they're literally spending money on original content. They're like making. They they did that like the. Uh, the story of maybe like the beats story. I think there's like a TV show around that or something. I don't know there. I I've read some like variety articles that Apple spending billions of dollars on original content. Hmm. Um, so why are they still do? Why are they still doing like the actual Apple TV, the small Apple TV like that? Why don't they have a plug-in like everyone else? Cause it, because Google, like the Chromecast or fire TV. Well, the Apple, well, I, I would say that the Apple TV is very similar to the Chromecast. In this yeah, way. but it's still a box that it's you need a box. external power. It's like power. A, a smaller Mac Man, Mini. But if yeah. you look at the, I have a Chromecast at home. The thing hangs off the back of your TV. It's not it, like, it's supposed to magnetize. Yeah, it's supposed to magnetize, but like. It's, no, I agree. Why don't they have a plug-in dongle? Why don't they have like the uh, the Amazon Fire Stick yeah. or a Chromecast? Because the thing, the thing is actually a, you know, it's a powerful device. Like it is. You can it play is pretty powerful. Yeah. Coupled the with the, yeah. coupled with the remote, you can like and play I think some it's pretty got, cool games. And yeah. like the I/O for audio is pretty good for it now too. I think right. Yeah, like they have, have Adobe Atmos too. options. Optical, yeah. yeah. It does. Um, I think the new ones are 4K. Yeah, as the well. new they can output 4K. Yeah. Um. So so going off rumors, um, and we'll kind of end it with this because we've been going for a while. <laughs> um, I know. Um. So Colin, pull up pull up the article. Yep. Um. Wait, Mac Mini, buy? Yeah. Yes, Is that that I think I think honestly, which I'm one, super though? impressed with all of the products. What do you mean, which one? You can do, the mean, quad core or the six core, think, starting at seven ninety nine for everybody. If you're trying or, to compile or a Swift project 11. and it's going to take you a year to get a six core processor, if you're just an everyday Joe and you just want a workstation to edit your yeah. photos and whatnot, if you want like a really nice clean workstation, you can you you'll be okay with what? So the entry level is eight hundred bucks. How much RAM and how much storage? So eight gigabytes. <sighs> RAM. It's fine though. No. DDR4. Dude, phones at, have six gigs of RAM. Man. I just, I don't think it's acceptable for a desktop. To have I mean, gigs both started eight gigs. It, both dude, started eight, eight gigs. Same fine. DDR4. 16 is becoming the new norm, but as it relates to the, game, the whole world of gaming PCs, you can still get away with loading your PUBG up with eight gigs. We're not going to, we're not even going to go there. Okay. <laughs> So you, it's a you, buy, you but a the cheaper one is the buy. You need a dedicated machine to run PUBG. <laughs> is um, the quad core the buy or, or over the, the six core? I don't know. For the I, price don't, I, I need to look at the actual benchmarks of it's the 8700K, I think. Yeah. It's, and so. Yeah, I don't, it's not generation a Intel Core i5. And but, there's a Core i3 for the other one. It depends where you're using it for. It I really depends where you're using it for. You have to be running programs that are utilizing high hyper, CPU multi threading. Right? Like if you're running Xcode and like doing builds and compiling stuff live. You probably want to spec it yeah, up a little need, bit. You need a heavy, you need a meaty CPU to get right. through that build time. Right. So if you're again like a software engineer that's running or, or editing videos, yeah. If you're compiling you know? compiling code, if you're compressing video or exporting video or what have you, 
and you need so realistically power. if you're not buying this for a media machine like this sit yeah. at your computer yeah. everybody should be buying the no, one that's a little more expensive. Expensive. i think you'll be more than fine yeah. buying the entry-level device and more than happy in doing so so okay let's talk about the the apple ar glasses so apple already has ar kit 2 so they did ar kit 1 with the 10 then ar kit 2 ar iOS kit 12. 2 ios 12 they have the measure app um, they showed off, they, they've been showing off augmented reality at every single event. So Colin, is it on screen right yeah, now? It is. So if you're watching this live on YouTube, you can see Mark Gurman, who I've known since my Engadget days in 2009, 2010, he was working at nine to five Mac and he was getting all these incredible scoops. And then Bloomberg scooped Mark Gurman and said, come work for us. And Mark Gurman has just been hitting it out of the park with Apple scoops. Last year, in November of 2017, so almost a year ago, he put up an article called Apple, I'm just reading off this display, Apple is ramping up work on AR headset to succeed iPhone. No one gave a damn about this article. I do not remember, like, maybe some articles just, like, reblogged it and do what they do, but this is just out in the open here. And I don't think Mark is wrong because he has been right way too many times for him to have been fed false information. You said to so, succeed it. To succeed the iPhone, yes. I don't so, agree with that, but so I definitely think it's a standalone product. I'm glad you don't agree because I can. we, we can talk about <laughs> this. So back in 2006 and even prior to that, like the years leading up to Macworld in 2007, the rumor mill was on fire with the iPhone. Apple's doing it. Apple's not doing it. Apple would never do a phone. Apple can't do a phone. Look at Apple now. Their whole business is a phone. Correct. Correct. They are a trillion dollar company. Most of their profits over the last ses to 10 years has been the iPhone. And dongles. But guess what? <laughs> guess what? Nothing lasts forever. And you know what? They have to make something new because the iPhone will not last forever. And we're moving toward the era of spatial computing. And Apple historically waits for the product to be matured and the market to try it in various ways. Remember, touchscreen and phones weren't invented by Apple. There were resistive touchscreens with yeah, Palm Pilot and Palm all that Pilot, stuff. all that stuff. And then Apple comes out with a capacitive all glass device. Now every phone on the market looks the same. Apple led that charge. So I, I would like to believe that Apple is getting ready right now as we speak they're working in super secrecy because this thing hasn't really leaked at all besides this article and no one's talking about it i think they're developing some crazy augmented reality headset that's probably going to seem like it's crap at first it might even be a generation crap device a uh, generation one crappy device like you could argue the original iphone was or the watch or the or the watch was too yes um but i think that apple realizes and, and this is just not me making this up. Like Apple's pushing AR so hard right now, right? Are they not? Like they, yeah, have, no, they not. have entire, like when they did WWDC, they have augmented reality demos on stage. Again, with the new iPad, they mentioned the augmented reality capabilities. When they, with the new first iPhone. First thing when you go into the campus. The, first thing should. when you go into Apple Park Visitor Center, there's this AR thing. I think that Apple will do the glasses. And um, Colin, can you link the article in the chat really yeah. quickly? Um, read the article, read it for yourself. There's a code name for the product. They're building their own operating system for the product. And I just think that there's, there's not really anyone else doing AR that well. Magic Leap is two and a half thousand dollars. HoloLens is like three grand and that's running Windows Holographic. And, and Magic Leap is running its own operating system. And then you have Oculus, um, you have that Oculus, the new HTC one that's Vive. coming out, the mm -hmm. HTC Vive, PlayStation VR. Um, and then there's like all the off-brand ones, like the, well, there's the Samsung, not off-brand, but like the Asus, like all the kind of like lower end ones. Um, but VR is kind of like having its moment too, but I think AR, where you're able to see the real world with the you know kind of operating system in your field of view, um, I'm just really hyped on this article um, because German is someone that I trust with Apple News, and he wrote an article for Bloomberg. But then, I mean, you can argue what you think of Bloomberg too. Um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens in 2019 moving forward because if Apple does this, it will change the paradigm of computing on I'll the say, go. I'll say this, I'll and say that's this. my spiel. I don't, I don't think it's as, I don't think it's as, as, as hype as you're making it out to be in the sense that great. 
in the sense that a hollow, like a virtual reality slash augmented reality lens you, produced by Apple yep. is in no, in my opinion, no means going to supersede the iPhone in the, in 10 years. Like we're not there yet. Yeah. That's 10 years from now. No, but you said you, you, one you, you, to succeed the new iPhone. Right, you, I'm telling you that like they'll no, re- dude, it will not become their moneymaker in two years. No, they will release it. And maybe in the future, in some futuristic society in which we use our hands and we drag. Yes. Like, yes. It, 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 it yes. could happen, and but it's not going to happen overnight. Definitely not. And I'm but that's curious. What, that's, that's what they're working on now, though. I, I really believe it. it was, but like in a time frame, like with the sentiment of a time frame. Like, 2025. No. 2030. 2030? <laughs> I'll say twenty. That what we've completely ditched phones. That like in twenty thirty, you will ha- you will be wearing a device, or maybe a device will be implanted into you. In Neuralink, which, they'll in, have a product in which the next six you will. Yeah. Elon said on Joe Rogan. I'm not a product. They didn't say product. They Sorry, said demo. Something. Demo. No, they said that they have something to to announce. To announce. That's game breaking. To announce. Like yes, nobody yes, yes, ever yes, thought yes. they could do. Yes. So, yes. So that that that's gonna be in my mind. That's like. Will we get away from phones? Sure. Will there? Will Apple's first iteration, second iteration, or even third iteration of their of their headset going to supersede this thing? No way in hell. Okay, so then then I challenge you and say, let's go back to 2007, 2008 when the iPhone 3G, and it's like, oh yeah, cool, like whatever. Now the iPhone is one of the best selling products of all time. Yeah, but you have, all right, look at the other products in the space at that time. You have Blackberry. Right, and look at all the products in the space the now. No one's but doing it. No, but you have to. No one's doing AR. Blackberry was a successful company. Sure. That was a good product. Sure. The and Palm and, and Trio, Apple those were literally good murdered Blackberry. I'm not saying that they didn't, <laughs> but the state at which Blackberry was at versus the state of where VR sets are at is there's no comparison. Sure, they're absolutely. You're absolutely right. So I agree with you that nobody thought that Apple could make a phone and that'd be doing so well. I agree with you on that. Is that is AR and VR at a point at which it's going to have some global dominance and everybody and their brothers going to be wearing these headsets and we're all going to like, dude, dude, absolutely dude, not right dude, now. dude, dude, 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, you could have said, no, no one's going to be everyone carrying around supercomputers in their pockets. No way. Sure. AirPods yeah, and wh- glasses and a watch. Yeah. And maybe a tablet and, if you want. And the iPad Pro connected to the Mac Mini. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and that. Also, speaking of AirPods, no AirPods 2, no nope. Air Power, no Mac Pro at this event. I was, I was, I was personally I'm really curious offended. to see the Mac Pro. And hopefully, if they get their shit together, they'll I know, it. Colin just did a deep sigh. He wants that Mac Pro so well, bad. Almost, well, no, I'm, I'm getting the Mac Mini instead of the Pro. I'm not waiting yeah, anymore. Yeah, and then the Pro's so, going to come out in 2019, and you'll be like, dang it. They could have not, they could have not I got money released the Mac <laughs> Pro with an eighth generation CPU. Yeah, you're right. That would That's not fair. have so, happened. So, for, for a timeline purpose, in 2017, when I was working at Mashable still, uh, one of our editors, Lance, was invited with like four other publications. It was a very small meeting, but they got, got to sit with Apple executives. And the title of the article was called "The Mac Pro is Getting a Redo" or a, "Getting a Do Over." And then this year in 28, so we were supposed to see it by the end of 2018. Yeah. And then this year, TechCrunch got a quote from Apple, and Apple is basically like, "Yeah, sorry, 2019." I think so, it's fine because they ju- Intel just put out the CPUs. They have enough time to integrate the best Intel CPU. Into do you think thing. we'll see Mac new Mac Pro, this new modular, like they're getting away from the trash can? Do you think we'll see that in 2019? I would hope so. Yeah. Call I, it now. First half or second half? Uh, just for fun. I'll say second half. Same. I'm going to go with you on that. Do you ever think we'll see Air Power? No. Okay. And, so and you- the reason why is just like. There's so many other companies that, that, that yes. have clearly just done it right. Yeah. It How be, are they going to innovate cool, on it? It would be cool, though. How I got to say, it, it would be cool to put the watch and the phone and the AirPods on one pad next to your bed. It would be. Well, there's other companies that you can do that with. Well, you know what, Apple? If you don't – if first you don't succeed, try <laughs> dust <again>. yourself <laughs> off and try again. AirPods 2 with the wireless charging case. Everyone's so psyched Whatever. on AirPods 2, but, like, the AirPods are so good. I don't They're even great. know what you they can improve. You don't need wireless charging for them. You really don't need it. It's, it's, it's AirPods as a, a product deal. is one of my favorite Apple products that's come out. It's, it's one of, yeah, I think it's it is not probably one of the best selling are. too. They're good. It is it, it is crazy. Didn't they say yeah they're one of the best selling wireless headphones? Yeah. So yeah. You go walk down go, Broadway you, and yeah. tell, and count how many AirPods. We, you we see. are we are in a bubble in New York for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. I will All just right. no, walk no, down preface the it preface it preface it with saying we're in New York. Yes, dude. 
everyone and it's and it's funny because it took like six months I feel like I was I had AirPods day one and it took like a good six months until now you literally I could go outside right now and there's at least one person with AirPods just walking Minimum. somewhere yeah. yeah it's crazy and the same way that everyone has AirPods is the same way that everyone has a smartphone not just iPhone smartphone in their pocket is the way I think by 2025 everyone will be wearing some sort of glasses what just, if it's just a little Apple logo that we they it's just like magnetically just on your temple. Like, you get, you get, have you seen the movie Pi? No. <laughs> you haven't seen the movie Pi at all? Not. Has anyone seen the movie Pi? I'm not going to spoil it then. Never no, mind. Don't, don't I, do I, I, I was going to make a reference, but I won't. Okay. Um, that, was, that was quite the, the podcast. I, 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 I feel like I am, I am so very, I need I am, to like keep, I'm like exhausted this, I need to keep this that. organized much why. better because you guys will, you guys will jump back and forth way too much. I know. I just, I just want to punch Dylan is all that. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it takes stabs at Dylan is, is the podcast. I no, it was good. This was, this was a good one. I think. All right. We appreciate everybody who took their time to either. Come yeah, I know. And, and, and I, and I, I am definitely trying to get, well, it is Wednesday. We did do it on Wednesday. Like we say, we always do. I want to get like a, a certain time down for the podcast. Like I'm glad we're doing it on every Wednesday. Um, I don't know what time we're going to do it next year. Drop a like if you're still here watching. Thank you. Three, three, still 300 people here. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, thank you everyone listening to the podcast. If you're driving in a car, um, when you're done driving, please give us a rating in iTunes and tell us how much you love me just like berating Dylan at every option, <laughs> that opportunity that I can. Um, no, Dylan's a great co-host and I'm glad that I have someone um, that is like smarter than me on the show because oh. it's, it's nice to have perspective from like a developer, you know, cause like I like the products for media and that kind of thing where you like the products because you build on them. Right. So it's, I, I really like the dynamic between me and you. And, and if you like the dynamic between me and Dylan, please again, rate us, like us, share it, whatever, tell your friends. This has been the phenomenal podcast experience. And uh, the word is, and the word is, um, the word is salt. Salt today. I think that's salt in there. Yeah, maybe. It is. the word is salt. The word of the day is salt. People love that. By the way, people just love, I just get random DMS on any platform. That's just like water bottle. Great podcast. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you're damn right. It was, <laughs> um, so comment salt, wherever you get in touch with comment, us, tweet. Um, Dylan is at Dylan shine underscore yep. on Twitter. And you're what on Instagram? Dylan underscore shine. Dylan underscore <laughs> shine. Colin is what? Colin E. Cornwell on Instagram and then Colin Cornwell on Twitter. on Twitter. So follow them both for the most epic behind the scenes. If you want to see really ugly pictures of me, you should follow them. Um, <laughs> Last thing I'll say as it relates to Twitter. Oh, here we go. If anybody who's watching can tweet at Twitter to make them remove the underscore from the end of my name, I'd extremely appreciate Dylan it. Dylan wants at Dylan Shine. And I had it at one point and then I did a bunch of uh, whatever. Like I, I put in my tickets, try to get them to change it. They won't, they won't do it. Okay. Hopefully someone at Twitter hears if me. Anybody who works at Twitter or is affiliated with Twitter can help me out. Cause the, the account, it's a dead account. Just throwing that out there. Like it's not, it's not active. Nobody's now. using it. Uh, anyway. and, <laughs> and, and, no, I was, I was going to say, and that, and that's it for the podcast. Phenomenal podcast experience with Sam Sheffer and Dylan shine live from New York city in three, six, eight. We will be back next week. I don't know if we're having a guest. We are booking some really cool guests. I do not want to spoil it, nope, and I do not. It. I do not want to hype it up. But um, I mean, Casey will come on the podcast eventually, so stay tuned for that. Because I mean, we're friends. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm really looking to bring some cool guests on. Like me and Dylan can just like hang out and talk and and talk about cool things like we did in the beginning. But I think there's so much value extracted from when we have someone here that is an expert in a field and then we have a really cool conversation like that um so look forward to that um and that's it happy wednesday happy, happy halloween. week happy halloween happy end of 2018 and uh, we'll be back next week see you next salt cheerio that's the end of the podcast and now we're still live we're still live on youtube and that's it. Um, yeah. I don't know. This has been quite the adventure. So, so, sorry for going so off the rails. Um, 
I'm, I, I'm really interested we need to, to we need to write bullet back. points down and like we need to we need to stick to something a little more regimented people were get people were like wait what are you talking about a macbook pro are you talking about this and we're like no <laughs> no this, this, this i will i will take the entirety of the blame for that <laughs> it is okay. me i'm telling you we gotta we just gotta come in with a set criteria set it was it was apple event recap today it was you a, gotta it fight was back apple event more, lit cap. dylan what up you gotta fight him more I try. No, he, you he don't. Fucking, no, he you just don't. interrupts me. What am I just gonna do? I do interrupt a lot. I do. All I ask is that if somebody's making a point, just don't let them, interrupt. Let them. them make the point, and then and then we'll move on. The then we'll move on. But we're good. Um, YouTube, what do you think of this one? Should I hold back? Hold me back, bro. <laughs> hold me back. I just, I, I just. Jared I mean, like, Walsh, damn, that's the, 180th ninth time that Sam cut off Dylan. Yeah, if you're counting, yes, it's probably over 200 times. No, but like these are the conversations that we have in real life. When like mm -hmm. when we're arguing about PUBG and if it's whether or not it's a good game, still, like I, I get very passionate about my beliefs. So I like to keep going display. off the rails. Need, <laughs> I need access to that display in some way so I can pull things up that the stream. Uh, that one, to you guys. yeah. This because, one you're saying? Yeah, we can oh run an God. HDMI. Oh, the picture. Did you really? We can, yeah. yeah. We yeah, can run an nice HDMI display. to it or oh, whatever. It's basically but saying don't like, make it like the old Vergecast. Well, it's interrupt fast. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Yeah, it, it, it it's a little difficult. And I definitely think that once we – it depends because sometimes when we really come prepared and, like, have – Especially on points. It's smooth. It's good. It's, it's smooth. like smooth and we have mm -hmm. definitive talking but points. But, I, I mean, we're, we're also like learning every week. Like, I wouldn't say this was a bad one. Would you say this was a bad one, YouTube? I don't know. I, don't um, know. No, I, don't, I, I definitely think it was a lot better to watch than it's going to be yeah, to listen. Still listen to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, we don't even have a topic for next week. So if you're still we watching. Have the, we, we, still, have we, we have ideas. We have ideas. We have, have that one idea I think we should still do. Oh, the interview one. No, well, we have that idea, but then we also have the, with the guests. We have that idea, but we also have with anyway. the documentary. We'll have, there's oh, always yes, stuff yes. to talk there's about. There's always stuff to there's talk about. Every but... week is new innovation somewhere. If it's not in like local domain for like every what everybody's using, right, it's right, in something. And and, and I like and I like that we get to talk about nuanced things. Like that's to me what makes a podcast interesting, right? Where like I go into the podcast and I learn. Like I think the people watching this learned things today, right? Yeah. I want I want people to to come away fulfilled, right? And not always get to experience rage Sam, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, Michael, thank you for dropping those links in there. Mm -hmm. Very nice, I'd rather watching, yeah. Um, that's the internet for you. Maybe have the topic hanging around in the frame somewhere. That's good. That's, not that's a idea. really good idea. Whoever said that, idea. Gerard Walsh. Maybe you we haven't had a gaming episode yet. We we had a gaming episode. We did, it was, we did VR. It was a little scoffed. You think so? Oh, I don't know. No, I think it was fine. I mean, growing pains, growing pains on everything. Yeah. We're always I mean, we, learning. Every, we every time we do the stream, there's a new set. Also, yeah. Darren, so. sorry, let Dylan talk more. I appreciate I appreciate the audience uh, standing up for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh what about goodness. Spotify canceling some family accounts? Uh, I can imagine. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I okay. can imagine why that's the case because people are just are sharing, sharing it. Yeah. They're like, "Oh, this is my brother. This is my sister. Yeah, this is my yeah. cousin." Like, yeah. you know, they're they're gaming the system here. I mean, yeah. people do it with Netflix too. So yeah. it's whatever. Yeah. There's it's growing pains for streaming companies too. It's super hard to regulate. Yeah, there. because what are you going to do? Send them your yeah. passport or lower your, thirds yeah. as you introduce topics. Yeah, we need the stream deck down here. We need to build lower thirds for the. Podcast. I'm down stream deck. I want I want more integration for me. Like I want to be able to throw. I, I still think that like we having need an air cam here, also. Column cam. We could do that. I don't care. Um, we get another, We should definitely get another camera, for well, and mount it on his desk facing him, so he can actually like. We should just have the egg cam. We could have the egg cam. We yeah. I th also think. I mean, we could do the same thing with the GoPro. We could use the GoPro. Oh man, that. someone just asked Sam, "What is your opinion on Call of Duty versus Blackout?" Or Call no, Duty versus it PUBG. doesn't matter. Blackout wins easily. So. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I think we're not doing. No, no, no! Don't go down that. Road. Don't go down the hole. All right. Yeah, let's. Mostly because talk I don't. More. Care. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. I definitely have to let Dylan talk more. It's tough. It's tough because I have a lot to say. I, I will admit, I need to work on myself for sure. Everybody's right. got to work on themselves. All right, ladies and gentlemen. PC wow, it's already five fifteen. I know. We were on here for forever. All and right, Muffy. If you watch two episodes, we did. Destroyed. We had Wallace from Main Gear here, and we went into. Oh we yeah, heavily yeah. went into PC tech with with Wallace. So definitely listen definitely to the previous podcast, like the phenomenal podcast experience. This is episode six, I think. Yes. Let's go through them. We did. What was the first one? First, it was the iPhone event. iPhone. Wow. Yes. iPhone event down here. We did that. And then, then we, we did, did Urban Transportation. Urban Transportation. Then we did Battle Royale games. And we did Battle Royale. Then four was Wallace. 
five was Marquez and six is, six this. is this. So if you Google the fit or uh, like look in iTunes or whatever, phenomenal podcast experience. Like I will rip the audio. That's why I start the, uh, like we, we go live on YouTube. Now we're going to do it on YouTube every week, I think. And we'll do like, we'll kind of hit go live and then wait a couple minutes till everyone's in here. And then mm -hmm. I start the podcast and then that audio is what I take and I upload. So like this raw stuff, you only see if you get to watch on YouTube. Um, how did you guys get the live to look so crispy? Seriously, I'd love to learn to do this stream. So Tech Roar, it's a bunch of Panasonic Lumixes, uh, the GH5s. Mm -hmm. um, Colin is a producer, so Colin does all the switching, all the audio, everything. We have XLRs with Shure SM7Bs. It's being powered by the main gear. And then um, the inputs for the uh, cameras are stream, uh, Elgato stream. Cam links. Cam, cam links. Elgato cameras. cam link. It's like a little USB dongle that allows us to basically take high yeah. resolution video in real time. And if you guys want to figure out how to do that, it's actually really, it, most computers, it, it's so tricky to set up. We should do a video like, on it's, how, it's how we set up our stream. Okay. So what's so funny about that is no joke. We did a Mashable live on how we go live at Mashable and we had a TriCaster. We had all this really crazy high tech stuff, I, yeah. but we could, we could do like a episode on our setup just for fun. It, honestly, this, the setup is very simple. Once you have it down, it's yes. literally all software that was, that's causing us issues. Yeah. It's software. I I definitely think it'd be interesting just to do a short episode or just like literally a YouTube video explaining like how to yeah. do how we get this production going. Yeah, it's really not that hard, but there is a lot of little technical small, small, small stuff technical that we hurdles. had to like. Oh, finagle. where where is the audio? So like, how are you routing your desktop audio? If you want to watch a YouTube video, how are you putting oh, that into the stream? We could right? go. Can you hear? I it can't do headphones? signal flow like, for is, everybody. There is a lot of nuance long. that goes into this. It's it's like it's it's crazy how it's like it could be so easy, but also it's so complex. So great. Great uh, podcast, podcast stream secrets, part one. The podcast about podcasting. God Trademarked. <laughs> All right, that's it. Colin, take us, take us take down, us home. take us offline. All take right, us ladies home. and gentlemen, thank YouTube, you very seriously, much for YouTube, seriously, thank listening. you so much. And if you watch this VOD all the way, you're awesome. You're, you, I will, I will personally give you a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> he said thank it. You. And, and to everyone that sent some donuts, I will Venmo you. you. If you can get through the whole thing and verify that you have. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I might have just put out a really bad thing. Out there. All right. I'm so. taking us out. Everybody All right. All have right. a good Goodbye, day. Goodbye, everyone. Everybody enjoy Halloween. Be safe Stay out there. Stay safe. Be I'm going to change Love the title you. of this to replay. Goodbye. Adios.